Hi everyone, welcome back to Operations Research. Today we will continue our discussion on nonlinear programming. Okay, so you can see this is part two. Um, basically, in part one, we introduced the basic ideas about nonlinear programming: uh, convex sets, convex functions, convex programs, and uh, first-order condition, da 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 da, whatever. But we focused on single varied problems. Okay, so that's something we did. Last week we talked about inventory problems. Mainly, they are applications of single variate nonlinear programming. Today we will move to multivariate situations and uh, again give you some applications. So the first thing we need to do is to do multivariate convex analysis. Um, actually, the only thing we want to do is to give you the idea about. How to show a function is convex in general? We know for single variate functions,、uh, there is a way to show it is convex. We basically take the second order derivative. For multi variate、uh, functions, there must be some other ways for doing that, and we're going to show you. It's an extension of、uh, second order derivative, but in a more complicated way. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do. We need to Be able to show a multivariate function is convex, and then we will tell you how to solve constrained nonlinear programs. This is not a big deal for single variate problems, but for multivariate problems, we need special techniques for doing that. Finally, we need.、Uh, I, I, I will give you one application for all the techniques we talk about in the class problems. We will give you more. So, uh, we have learned how to solve single variate nonlinear programs. Okay, an optimal solution either satisfies the first order condition if it is at the interior of the feasible region, or it was must be at a boundary point. If a nonlinear program is a convex program, then a feasible solution satisfying the first order condition must be optimal. Okay, these are some given facts we know. These above ideas actually apply to multivariate nonlinear programs. So still, we we hope problems are convex, so that first order condition is necessary, or、uh, I I mean necessary and sufficient for interior points, or we look at boundary points. Here, boundary points must must be those points that. Um, having some binding constraints. Okay, so the two ideas will still be applied today. But the first thing we need to do is to determine whether a function is convex, concave, or neither. Or whether a multivariate function is convex or concave. In this case, we still need to rely on、uh, twice differentiability. So we will assume all the functions are twice differentiable, and then. We will extend the notion of derivatives to、uh, multivariate functions. Mainly, the tool we need to use in this lecture is linear algebra. So, if you have learned that in, for example, um, management mathematics, then it's very good. Or if you didn't,、uh, I believe you have touched this in your、uh, calculus course. Anyway, I will teach you everything. So, the first thing,、huh, let's review partial derivatives. For a function, the ith partial derivative is defined like this. We take f as a as the function, and take the、um, the partial derivative according to one of the variables. Okay,、uh, we know how to do it. Given a function, for example, this one, if I want to do the first order derivative according to x one. Then I treat x two and x three as constants. Okay, so after the partial derivative, I get only two x one. If I want to do it to x two, then x one and x three are constant, so I only get x three. If I want to do it for x three, then x one and x two becomes constant. So that's why I get this. So I hope this is fine to you. We may also do second order derivatives. Okay, in this case, these are second order partial derivatives. For, uh, there are two different kinds of second-order partial derivatives. First is here,、uh, we take the 
derivatives、um, for one variable twice. So here, this notation means take f, take f, and take the first order derivative and then the second order derivative over x one. So this is two x one. Do another partial derivative. So I get two. For this, oh, there's only x three. So x three take first order derivative on x two. I get zero. For this one, I get six x three. Okay. There are also six different cross the de、uh, cross derivatives. Okay, that means the first time and the second time I take derivative. They are. I am talking about different variables. I am working on different variables. So for this, I want to know what's the coefficient for x one, x two. There is no such term, so this derivative is zero. Or you can take this term, okay, two x one, and then differentiate two x one by x two. You still get zero. For this, the same. For x two and x three, because we have this term, so the derivative for x two and x three. Over x two and then x three is one. In this case, we can see there are six different cross derivatives, but they only have three values. Okay. In particular, the order of taking、um, derivatives does not matter. Is that true in general? No. You know it from your calculus、uh, calculus course. So for second order derivatives,、uh, we know the following fact. Given f, if the second order derivatives are all continuous, then the order does not matter. Or say it in another way: if the second order derivatives, some of them are not continuous, then the orders may matter. Okay. In this course, we will only focus on、um, all those functions whose second order derivatives are continuous. So in all these、uh, all the functions you will see in this course, this is fine. Actually, for most basic functions that are relevant in the business and econo business and economics world,、um, this fun this property is satisfied. So we don't need to worry too much about the violation of this property. Always assume、uh, we are safe to always assume that the order of taking derivatives does not matter. All right. So our focus is on convex functions. So let's try to talk about it. If f is a single variate function, then f is convex if and only if its second order derivative is non-negative. Okay. So when f is a multivariate function, it's natural to ask whether convexity means all those partial derivatives are non-negative. And here, and、um, please correct this. It should be second order derivative. Okay. So, the first guess we have is, we want to check whether all the second order derivatives for partial derivatives are non-negative. If that's true, then we have、um, some feeling about convexity. So let's verify this with one example. Suppose I give you a second-order function, okay, like this. I want to ask whether it is convex, for example, at zero zero. So let's try to do it. The first-order derivative, as you can see, is here. When we differentiate f by x one, we get da 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 da. We get this. I hope this is fine for you. If we plug in zero zero. We will get one. We can say one is positive, but it's not really relevant to convexity, right? Because this is just the slope, slope of f at zero zero at the direction of x one. So what we really care is second order derivative. So we can take this and do another differentiation. So if we differentiate this. By x one again, we can get the second order derivative, and we can see it's two. So along x one, along x one, the second order derivative is positive. For 
x2 is the same thing. Well, we can do a first order derivative to get this. And if we do a second order derivative, that means we differentiate the first order derivative once again. Again, we get 2. So, looks fine, right? Well, we only have um, two single numbers. And that somehow tells us that um, at 0, 0, or at any point, the second order derivatives are non-negative. Okay? The second order derivatives are non-negative. Or if you want, you may even check those cross derivatives. If you differentiated f by x1 and then x2, you get 4. So everything are positive. Does that mean the function is convex? Well, of course it's no. So if we draw the figure for this particular function, we will see its shape is something like this. Okay? In particular, at 0, at 0, 0, okay, at this point, well, you can see that this uh, point is actually a saddle point. Well, along this particular direction, well, like here, we have a convex function, but along this direction we have a con uh, we have mm, looks like a concave function. At least it is non-convex, right? And we get a feeling. What we just mentioned to you about second order derivatives is necessary but not sufficient. Why? When we say that the second order derivative, okay, sorry, this is second order derivative, or well, second order. When we say that the second order derivatives are positive or non-negative, that just imply that the f function is convex along that two directions. But along another direction, f may be non-convex. For example, in this case, what we are saying is that along here or along here, no, f is convex. But if x1 is increasing and x2 is decreasing, for example, here. Along this direction, f is non-convex. What we need to do is to, sh to verify that f is convex in all the directions, in the 360 degrees. In all the directions, f must be convex. And then, checking only the second-order partial derivatives are not enough. Okay? So, in order to show the function is convex along all the directions, let's introduce two additional concepts, gradients and the Hessian matrix. Um, if you haven't heard about them in, um, in your life, then let's focus on the definition here. I give you a function which is multivariate. And if I collect all the first order and the second order partial derivatives, I can give you the gradient and the Hessian matrix, or just Hessian, of this function. Let's do this. If I collect all the first order derivatives into a vector, then this guy is the gradient of the function f. So when I talk about a gradient of a function f, that's just a natural generalization of first order derivative, right? I just collect all those first order partial derivative into a function, uh, sorry, into a vector. For second order derivatives, when I want to generalize it, I collect all the second order partial derivatives, okay, including those pure derivatives and the cross derivatives and then organize them in this particular matrix. This matrix uh, is called the Hessian matrix of the function f. So this is a general generalization of first order derivative. Hessian is the generalization of the second order derivatives. In this course, because all those f functions satisfies the condition that its second order derivatives are all continuous, so we know, according to the previous property, all the Hessian matrix are symmetric. So you don't, really, you don't need to really worry about whether this is x1 goes first or x2 goes first. It doesn't matter. 
okay, because these two terms must be identical. All the Hessian matrix must be symmetric. So this is a definition. Let's do an example to close this video. Given f like this, the gradient can be found by doing three partial derivatives. So differentiate this by x1, I get this, by x2, by x3, oh, nothing special. And then if I talk about Hessian, in this case Hessian will be a 3 by 3 matrix, like this. Here, the diagonals are the pure second order derivatives. So this is 2, and this is 0 because there is no x2 square terms. And for x3, this is 6x3. Okay? And then I can also calculate all those numbers for cross derivatives and plugging them into the Hessian matrix. We can see that the Hessian matrix is indeed symmetric, okay? And this will apply to every case. Sometimes we are talking about the gradient or Hessians at a point. So if we are talking about the gradient at the point 3 to 1, all we need to do is to plug in 3, 2, and 1 into the function. So this is the function form of Hessian. And if we say that we want to get uh, the gradient of f at 3 to 1, then we will get this. Okay? We plug in 3 into x1, so it's 6. We plug in 2 to x2. We plug in 1 to x3. So the gradient at f of uh, the gradient at f uh, a gradient of f at 3 to 1 is 6, 1, 5. For Hessian, it's the same thing. You just need to plug in these numbers into this matrix. And the only thing that you may do is to change 6x3 to 6. That's it. Okay, so that's the definition of gradient and Hessian. In the next video, I'm going to tell you how to use the Hessian matrix to show that a multivariate function is convex. Thank you.